And thank you for being with us. Our top story tonight, vandals hit a sacred space over the weekend. They spray painted swastikas and other anti-Semitic symbols on the Oregon Holocaust Memorial in Washington Park. But as Morgan Romero tells us now, that hateful, divisive act led to love and unity. It is a place for contemplation. It is a place for both thinking about the horrors that went on during the Holocaust, the millions of lives that were murdered by the Nazis, but it's also a place of hope. The Oregon Holocaust Memorial was created by survivors to educate people about what hatred can do to society. It includes the names of families who died in the war. Which is why so many were appalled to learn someone to face the memorial this weekend. Well, Anti-Semitism and hatred is still alive and well after all we've been through as a society and as a country that this is still happening is just it, it's heartbreaking and heart wrenching. Judy Margles, director of the Oregon Jewish Museum and Center for Holocaust Education, felt sick. It is very twisted. When police called her Sunday morning. It, it, it's very visceral. I have to say when you hear about something, I think my whole body just went numb. Swastikas, neo-Nazi sayings and symbols scrawled across the stone wall of the memorial in Washington Park. Officers also found anti-Semitic graffiti sprayed on street signs and concrete barriers in other parts of the neighborhood. Police quickly told the Parks and Rec Bureau and crews cleaned the graffiti Sunday. The intention was to deface something and, and instead community came together. Rather than divide us, Margles and Rabbi Eve Posen say the vandalism had the opposite result. Right away, Portlanders asked how to help. There are lots of messages of support coming through. I see, I see that one act of um, cowardice as turning into something quite wonderful today. That it's not all the bad, the bad that we've been seeing or the hurt that we've been feeling, that there is still hope. As of Monday afternoon, police didn't have any suspects. Not only do Posen and Margles want them caught and held accountable, but they want whoever did this to become educated. And to perhaps think about what the, in, the impact of their actions was and how perhaps they can learn about a different kind of community to live in and a different way of being in the world. Morgan Romero, KGW News. Now, Crime Stoppers offers cash for information that leads to an arrest. We have their contact information in this story on KGW.com. The fate of some counties could change in Washington tomorrow in terms of COVID restrictions, but it looks like Clark County will remain in phase three. The state will announce which counties need to revert to phase two on Tuesday. Its decision is based on the level of new coronavirus cases and hospitalizations. Going from phase three back to phase two cuts occupancy allowed at restaurants, gyms and other businesses from 50 to 25% and it further limits other indoor and outdoor gatherings. Clark County's public health director says the best way to not go backwards is to mask up and get vaccinated. We need to think about getting the numbers down and getting the number of cases down. And the more people who get vaccinated, the, the less transmission there will be. Cowlitz County is one of three counties in the state that was moved back to phase two three weeks ago. Its case numbers are still up, so that is not likely to change tomorrow. Let's take a look now at the number of people vaccinated in our area. Oregon has fully vaccinated almost 32% of the state's population with more than 1.3 million people. That means that they have gotten both shots or one dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Almost 2 million people have at least one dose. Washington has fully vaccinated almost 34% of its population, more than 2.5 million people there. More than 3.6 million people have at least one dose. Restaurant owners can now apply for federal grant money. Applications opened this morning. The Restaurant Revitalization Fund provides emergency assistance for eligible businesses. In addition to restaurants and bars, we're also talking about food trucks and food carts, bakeries and breweries and wineries. They can all apply for this aid as well. The program provides up to $10 million per business. Cheryl Casey owns Cheryl's on 12th here in Portland. She applied this morning. This money, if we would get this money, we would be able to reinvest in our, our business. Um, and the people that have been working for us have really been working for no raises, uh, minimal amount of money because we haven't had any money coming in. 
It is a lifesaver for businesses and employees. If you would like to apply, go to sba.gov. Applications will be processed in the order they're received. So first come, first serve here. Recipients aren't required to pay the money back as long as it's used before 2023. Oregon Governor Kate Brown has denied a request from the Commissioner of the National Women's Soccer League. She had asked for an exemption on capacity limits to host fans at Providence Park this weekend. The Portland Thorns have clinched a spot in the Challenge Cup Championship. The game is scheduled for Saturday at Providence Park, but because Multnomah County has moved into extreme risk, the stadium is effectively unable to have any fans in the stands. The league asked for an exemption that would have allowed Providence Park to hold 15% capacity or 3,800 people. That's what the limit would be if Multnomah County were back in high risk. India is in the middle of a catastrophic COVID-19 surge. Hundreds of thousands of cases and thousands of deaths are reported there daily. Now local groups are sending some help. Galen Etlin looks at how the Pacific Northwest is giving back and how you can too. Ajay and Lokesh have strong connections to India. Like our mother country is always very dear to us. They volunteer with the Portland chapter of Seva International, a Hindu faith-based service group. They're watching crisis play out. India seeing a surge of 400,000 cases and 3,600 deaths in about 24 hours. How have you felt hearing that news? It's like dominoes are falling, essentially, but instead they're not actually chips, they're people. So we got to put our heads down and try to save as many lives as possible. Nationally, Seva USA launched a relief campaign. In 48 hours, like around $5 million have been raised. Groups are sending medical supplies and oxygen, and volunteers are on the ground in India trying to help with protective gear, sanitation, and education. They're also offering support for a growing number of orphans. Some of them are so young, that they don't even understand what has happened. You know, as a father of a three-year-old, I can't even imagine leaving my kid in that sort of a situation. Preventing the spread of COVID-19 is challenging in a huge population. Tons of cities that look like New York, trying to vaccinate 1.5 billion people. That compares to just 330 million in the U.S. Now, Seva USA's service isn't just in India. There's need in Oregon, too. And people are responding. Volunteers have been part of local vaccination clinics and food delivery programs for vulnerable groups, with COVID cases surging in both the Pacific Northwest and India. This is a human crisis. It, just, it affects all of us. They hope neighbors can lend a hand and save lives. Galen Etlin, KGW News.